Africa's energy gap is huge, but it's also a huge opportunity. In the 2015 Africa Progress Report, Power, People, Planet, Seizing Africa's Energy and Climate Opportunities, we show how Africa can meet its power needs while leading the world in renewable energy. How big is the energy gap? Two-thirds of Africans lack access to electricity. That's 621 million people. To give you a glimpse of the gulf in energy use between Africa and the rest of the world, a kettle boiled twice a day by a family in Britain uses five times as much electricity as a Malian uses per year. A Tanzanian would take eight years to consume as much electricity as an American consumes in one month. Four-fifths of Africans rely on firewood, charcoal, and other solid biomass for cooking. That causes indoor pollution that kills 600,000 people a year. And the overall number of Africans without access to electricity is expected to rise between now and 2030, increasing Africa's share of the world's population without electricity. The same is true of clean cooking facilities. Africa's electricity gap takes a heavy toll on society. Education efforts are seriously undermined because a huge proportion of primary schools lack access to electricity. So African countries need modern energy strategies that drive growth and reduce poverty. At the same time, they can lead the world in moving to renewable energy sources. Africa accounts for only 2.3% of global carbon dioxide emissions. It can avoid the high carbon trajectory followed by China, the European Union and the United States by leapfrogging onto a low carbon energy pathway, just as it has leapfrogged straight to mobile phones. Africa's energy investment opportunity is also huge. Africa's poorest people are paying among the world's highest prices per unit of energy. Africans who live on less than 250 US dollars a day spend 10 billion US dollars on energy. Reducing energy costs by investing in modern energy could create investment opportunities, increase household savings, and reduce poverty. In our report, we examine the powerful current of change that is sweeping across Africa's energy systems. As a latecomer to modern energy development, Africa has an advantage. It can adopt the latest renewable technologies, adapt them to local needs, and innovate to create new energy possibilities. All over the continent, countries are seizing the renewable energy opportunity. Fossil fuels will continue to figure in the energy mix in some countries, but as prices for renewables fall, fossil fuels can be gradually phased out. How can Africa find the financing to build its energy gap of 55 billion US dollars a year? Stemming illicit financial outflows would make a huge difference, as they amount to 69 billion US dollars a year. African governments can also redirect the 21 billion US dollars a year they spend on subsidizing inefficient, inequitable, and often corrupt utilities and on energy subsidies that mainly benefit the wealthy. They should spend the money instead on energy investment, social protection, and targeted connectivity for the poor. G20 governments, for their part, should stop subsidizing fossil fuel exploration and production. They spent 88 billion US dollars on such subsidies in 2013. African governments must seize the opportunity offered by the global climate talks in Paris in December to call for investment in modern energy for all Africans and help to adapt to the effects of climate change. So far, global climate finance arrangements have failed Africa. This must change. At the climate talks in Paris, African governments have every reason to insist on measures that limit average global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade while showing the way to the low carbon future we all need. As the 2015 Africa Progress Report shows, the global climate moment is also Africa's moment. Africa's moment to lead the world.